I always loved shrink art as a kid and never knew there could be so many possibilities. With a little creativity and lots of playing, I've come up with some great techniques and jewelry projects that I want to share with you. It's who I am, a little bit, so and some Shrink art has been around for a long time, and with the invention of these new inks that dry on the plastic, the possibilities are endless. I'm making this great little pin here with these little rings hanging from the bottom. I'm starting with the black shrink plastic from Judykins, and I'm buffing this with one of those little sponge sanding blocks. And what this does is this allows the ink to stick to the plastic a little easier than the slick plastic. Next, I'm going to take my shape stamp of this t-shirt and I'll ink it with the blue ink. So we just tap the ink on here. You press straight down with your stamp. When you pull off the stamp, you can see that the ink left a couple of holes in the plastic here. But my solution to that was to take this other stamp, which is a couple of different circles, and stamp that right on the top. I'm using the green ink with the medium circle, and I'll stamp that right onto the t-shirt. What's fun about this technique is if you stamp it off the edge, it's okay because I'm going to cut that away. I'll switch to the gold ink, and finally I'll use the blue, which is a lighter blue than the background of the t-shirt. Next, I'll cut this out, but I have to cut it out very carefully because the ink will smudge. And here's one that I've cut out and I've already punched the holes in it. This is important that you punch the holes about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the image. When it shrinks, then that way my little charms will hang perfectly. Next, I'm going to punch out these little rings. And the way I punch out the rings is a little bit different. I start out with the smallest hole or the center hole first. Slide it in to the punch, press straight down on it. Oh, maybe that one's just a little bit too far, so let me get one closer here to the edge. Next, I take my second punch, which is the outside of the ring, and I slide it in upside down. And this way, I can see the center hole so that I make sure that I keep that in the center. With my punch upside down, I press straight down, and now I have my little ring. I take my ink pad and I place the ring right on top of the ink pad and tap it. And you can see that adds the ink right on the black plastic here. Next, I'm going to insert these into my toaster oven. I need three rings here and I'm going to put them right on top of my cookie sheet. And I'm also going to include the t-shirt. We want them a little bit separated there. And we're going to slide that right into the toaster oven. What's fun about this is you can watch it shrink because it goes so quickly. Now it looks like it's done shrinking because it's as small as it's going to get. So let's take this out of the oven. Sometimes the shrink plastic doesn't flatten out all the way. This one looks almost perfect. That little ring doesn't seem to be as flat as it can be, so I can take my stamp and just press down on that lightly, and that flattens out the rings. Here is my finished pin. I added the rings with little jump rings at the bottom of the shirt, and then I glued on a little pin back with some silicone glue, and now I have a finished shirt pin. I was inspired by all of these rings at the bottom of my t-shirt and I thought, what happens if I have larger circles that I punch out? This is the result of those larger circles. I went through my craft closet and I pulled out some of the punches that I have and this large punch makes this large ring. The way that I created that was I punched out a piece of white shrink plastic this time, and I punched out the inner circle. This is a little bit easier to punch because the circle sticks out from that medium-sized punch. You just slide it in, 
and press straight down. And now I have a circle within a circle. Next I need to punch a smaller hole so that I have a place to hang the jump ring. I have a quarter inch punch here and I just slide it in the smallest area because it gives my ring kind of an odd shape, which I really like. Now I need to decorate my ring and I'd like to tint it this great green color with some blue accents. And the way that I do that is I take my ink pad and I tap it directly onto the plastic. Now I'll take my dark blue ink and I stamp it right onto the plastic. But I'm going to do a little trick and I'm going to twist my stamp a little bit and what happens is it removes some of that ink and then when I finish all of these rings, I'll use a long piece of chain and create this really fun necklace. Watch it fall around me and shades plum and bird of green. After looking at all these symmetrical circles, I thought, what would happen if I had an asymmetrical piece? I found that's really interesting. You can tear the shrink plastic. And when you tear it, you end up with some really oddball shapes. Once I've torn the shrink plastic, again, this time I want to hang something from the bottom as well, so I'll punch the holes towards the bottom. Now I'm using a quarter inch punch here because when this is finished shrinking, the holes will be approximately an eighth of an inch, which is a perfect size to insert a jump ring. Now unlike the toaster oven, I'm going to use my heat tool to shrink this. Now once it's done shrinking, before it's completely cooled off, I'm going to apply a little extreme embossing powder because this is going to create the peacock extreme look. You just take your embossing powder and just sprinkle that carefully on top of the black plastic. Unlike the other times where I usually shake off the excess, I'm just going to heat it right back up because some of that embossing powder is going to stick to the plastic. What's great about this embossing powder is you notice the little bit longer that I've heated it, I end up with a copper color and the areas that weren't heated as long are kind of a turquoise green. This actually looks like dichroic glass. If I add one layer of diamond glaze, which is a clear dimensional adhesive, it really seals that embossing powder right onto the plastic. I'll just spread it out with my paintbrush and just let that dry. You want to put your paintbrush in a little cup of water because if the diamond glaze dries on your paintbrush, it's kind of glued the bristles together. Once this is finished drying, I add the little circles at the bottom and then apply a pin back on the back of this to make it into a pin. I call this technique extreme peacock because that embossing powder looks like the iridescence of peacock feathers. Now here's a couple other pieces that I've made. Same t-shirt with a little star on the front, another pin that I tore the plastic, but this time I used the black plastic and the white plastic and I attached a whole bunch of little rings at the bottom. And finally, I have these wonderful earrings that I've made to accompany that funky necklace. You can see a couple of these pieces. I've used the extreme peacock technique. I've also stamped on the black shrink plastic with the rings and came up with this beautiful iridescent color on the large ring. As you can see, I've been playing a lot with shrink plastic. You're never too old to be a kid, so start pulling out all your toys and play. I'll see you next time. To create this project yourself, download this week's design guide. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions along with special make-it-your-own bonus tips and ideas.